The Office of International Visitors, the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, and the U.S. State Department invited these journalists from Uzbekistan to the United States to provide an introduction to American principles of journalism. One of the primary objectives of their visit was examining the different multimedia platforms for delivering the news. BronxNet welcomed these visitors to an open discussion on community television here in the Bronx, where Executive Director Michael Max Nabi, Production Manager Marcelo Mendez, Director of Development and Training Audrey Duncan, and Public Access Manager David Jenkins Jr. discussed with these seasoned Uzbeki journalists the importance and the significance of BronxNet to the community at large. What we do is we train the public, we train residents who live in the Bronx, how to operate cameras, how to shoot and work as a team in the studio, students and just our neighbors in the Bronx can take training here. And use uh, production equipment, uh, broadcast uh, quality, state-of-the-art production equipment in the studios as well as in the field to produce programs about issues that they want to share. We encourage independent voices to produce content to share with their neighbors in one of the most diverse places in the world, New York City and the Bronx. We've trained thousands of Bronxites in media production, and additionally, we've trained over 3,000 high school, intermediate school, and college students in media production. This is considered you know, workforce development training. Many of the young people that we train, the students that we train, go on to build careers in media, at major networks, and in communications-related fields. So you'll see some of the people that have built experience and taken training here on air in front of the camera as hosts and reporters, but also behind the scenes as producers, directors, <coughs> production professionals and technicians. We also have a youth uh, media coordinator who's responsible for getting the internships uh, for the students. And high school students working in this very studio after school have uh, produce programs um, that have garnered uh, industry recognition. Uh, for example, a, a New York Emmy nomination uh, was uh, given to high school students training and producing a program at BronxNet called Open 2.0. The students' training have gone on to get careers, but also the citizens, uh, uh, the members of the general public who live in the Bronx that have taken training here have also not only shared programs on the channels and shared their voice and their views, uh, they've also uh, built careers. Uh, one young man started his media career here uh, operating a camera as, you know, in a training class and uh, he produced a program, but then he went on to get a, a film deal. He's a film director, uh, he has a deal with Lionsgate, and he also started a production company on both the East and the West Coast. Uh, I'd like to introduce some of our, our, our team. Would you, would you, Marcelo Mendez? Uh, well, just a brief word. I'm, I'm very proud of being part of a team, and this is basically uh, probably the hiding mission in Bronx, and it is not to build individuals but build individuals and to work as a team and this is we do that very well uh, as michael just mentioned we have producers that have been trained here but what is all that experience means if you don't know how to work with all the elements of your surrounding and that's basically uh, a hidden mission here that we train them how to produce how to work at the same it's like an orchestra <laughs> <laughs> to play at the same time and we do it in every single show in every single production and basically it's helping the whole Bronx borough to work as a team as well with it so I'm glad and part of our team obviously is it doesn't mean anything if we don't have everybody else Audrey Duncan and go ahead in our training department as Michael mentioned we train the general public so you could be um, 
an adult in the Bronx, anywhere between 18 and 90 or over, and you could have no production experience whatsoever and sign up for one of our classes, learn to produce using the camera, all of the equipment necessary, and then within a couple of months, you can start producing your own show. Um, we offer residence training in field, meaning they can learn to use a camera to take it out and go out and get shots and put it all together as a story or a show. We also train them in studio production so they can use all of the equipment in the studio and do a talk show. Um, we've trained thousands of people over the years and they've produced great programs under the guidance of Mr. David Jenkins, our programming manager. My name is David Jenkins. I am the programming manager at BronxNet. Uh, my job and my responsibility is to see that each program uh, that uh, is on BronxNet channels uh, aired on a, uh, a really facilitated to be aired at a specific time and on a specific day. Um, what we're trying to do in my department, our job is to make sure that the programs, managers, the, uh, the producers, that is, that they receive the visibility of the views and their voices that they want the Bronx residents to receive. So our job is to look at the quality, uh, the video quality, the audio quality of each program, and to make sure that each producer is meeting the standards that BronxNet um, has set forth from the, for them to meet. Whenever there's a problem with any of the programs, um, our responsibility is to get back to the producer and to encourage them to bring the quality uh, of their programs up to a level which is acceptable for broadcast and cablecast. We try to help them realize that this could be a stepping stone for them to achieve uh, greater opportunities elsewhere. How does it work? Do you have a separate training studio? Do you have staff members who dedicate their entire time to training? Do you uh, give them specific equipment that they can use for training? Or all it, be it is being done uh, within your working facility. So yes, there is the, uh, what we call the public access, um, which is the you know, core part of BronxNet being here. Um, we have a training department. So in addition to myself, we have uh, freelance, I'm not sure how you would say that, <laughs> um, trainers who are people with years of experience not just with teaching, but with being media producers or filmmakers. And they come and they teach the classes. Um, they teach everything from the basic, how to turn on the camera, to how to just create a great show. And that happens over a two month period. Um, six hours a week for the field class, three hours a week for the studio class. They receive that training. They receive the training in the same public studio that we use so that once a person is finished training, they will use that same studio to do their show. Do you charge for your training? Uh, and if not, where are you getting your funds from? Um, I will let our executive director explain about the funding of BronxNet, but we charge what we would call a, a token fee for the classes, it's not nominal, right? No, no. It's not what you would pay if you were to register with a college or even some other independent media schools. We charge it just to um, really to so that the person will will stick with the class. It's just a token fee, um, and they don't pay for anything else once they've paid for the training class. They don't pay to use the equipment. They don't pay for materials in the class. It's just that small fee to register for the class. Uh, do you award your students with uh, certificates of completion or any other documents that confirm their training? And how valuable is this document in other states? Um, we do. We provide them with a, a certificate that we create. Um, all of the students appreciate receiving this certificate because they can show it to their friends and family. 
some come to us and they really express to us that they want this certificate because they are applying for a position in media or they're moving to another state or they're trying to get into a media program at a university. So I think with our training program, it really depends a lot on what the person puts into it. So they all use it in order to get to be able to produce a program to go on our channels, but other people use it for additional purposes as well. Um, so that's the public access training program, but the Bronx, the other training they do with the high school and college students, um, perhaps Marcelo or Michael can explain that. So there's sort of two different types of training going on at BronxNet. The Bronx, which um, is a, a unique place, it's the borough of parks. The Bronx is the borough of hip hop. It's the borough of universities, uh, the borough of universals. Uh, we we have um, you know so many emerging communities when they come to the United States that come through the Bronx because it's sort of a welcoming borough. Um, there's perceptions about the Bronx based on the past and based on myths and based on um, you know other circumstances that people have around the world. And one of the questions I want to ask you is, what have you heard about the Bronx? But uh, you know, primarily our funding for training the general public and a lot of our core missions comes from this arrangement, this agreement that happens every 10 years it's renegotiated with the cable company. Uh, in this case, Cablevision and Verizon offer video service uh, in the Bronx and they're using the public rights of way, that's the public land, to run the cable. Uh, and, and they provide support for BronxNet to fulfill its mission. BronxNet is independent from the cable company. We're an independent, not-for-profit, non-commercial. Uh, yet we are also able to um, seek grants from other sources. We try to diversify our revenues. So uh, we um, can forge partnerships uh, through underwriting arrangements where specific entities can um, underwrite a cause or a mission uh, or that are related to some of the programs that we do, whether it be training or actually the product, you know, the, the, the programs that we produce, the TV shows that we produce. It might be aligned with the mission of, uh, of uh, an entity like Aetna uh, Health Insurance uh, was underwriting some of our pro Spanish language programs. The crime rate is pretty high in your community and I even um, uh, saw so this logo, Gone by Back, that, which is uh, saying that if you wouldn't have that much guns, the problem of uh, collecting the guns wouldn't be as acute. Well, it's a powerful observation. So, uh, um, and I'm glad you asked that yeah, question. The Bronx, for Bronx. many years, uh, going back to the early 70s, has been a symbol, an icon for urban blight. This was uh, due to unfortunate circumstances back uh, during those times uh, when, um, you know, different people point to different reasons, uh, but there was a lot of, um, there was a, a lot of uh, crime, there were burnt out buildings, uh, it could have been you know, some people say it was because landlords were trying to collect insurance and it was more valuable for them to, 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 to do that than it was to, to, um, to, to uh, rent out the, the buildings. Uh, you know, that, that's just one school of thought. There's many, there's many uh, explanations for, for why this occurred, but it was a downward spiral for a period of years. And it was unfortunate. People left the Bronx. It went from, uh, I think it was uh, a, a very populous place uh, in, this, in, in the 50s, uh, and then the population started declining thereafter. Uh, but there are people who stayed and worked together as a community to build the Bronx back, or not to build the Bronx back, but to build the Bronx forward. Um, there were environmental activists, uh, there were uh, spiritual leaders, there were elected officials, there were grassroots organizations that worked together with neighbors, people just living and, and thriving and striving in the Bronx uh, to build community, to build community networks and to really fight a good fight. What is a good fight um, <coughs> against uh, against the crime and over against the uh, 
um, against uh, what other uh, certain, you know, whether what other evidence of urban blight there was. Uh, <coughs> they stood strong. And over a period of years, uh, there were serious improvements. Uh, uh, there was, uh, you know, a borough president, Fernando Ferrer, who actually was uh, responsible uh, with other great people to, for this station existing, Bronx and existing. Um, you know, there's public policy, of course, but there were people in the Bronx that came together to build entities like this. And, you know, this is sort of community building through media. So BronxNet is just one sort of factor perhaps and and maybe community building and, and coming out of uh, what was a, a problem into really a developing and burgeoning borough which the Bronx is now uh, economically the Bronx is thriving um, the, the the perceptions of the past uh, are really remnants of the past that we don't forget but it can cause confusion out there in other parts of the world so you know relatively speaking the Bronx is, is, is does not have a lot of crime uh, it, it, it is economically thriving it is the borough of parks and when I say that it's because it has more parkland than any other borough in New York City it has uh, about 14 universities and colleges, institutions of higher learning here. So that's why it's called the Borough of Parks. And there's been tremendous positive transformation since the Bronx of the past, that symbol of urban blight. It is now transformed. You can have a great time with your friends, with your family visiting, and see a place that is culturally rich with um, really uh, the flavors of the world right here on the streets of the Bronx and the parks of the Bronx. We have a Bronx district attorney, Robert Johnson, who appeared in one of our programs yesterday. Just yesterday, he was here in our studios appearing on a program called Perspectives on BronxNet, hosted by Darren Hyman. And Darren was interviewing him about a, a pretty unique and innovative program, the Gun Buyback Program. So the, the crime has been greatly reduced in the Bronx and relative to other places it is, you know, it, it is, uh, I would say, um, not a, 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 you know, a terrible problem in this borough. But one of the things that is uh, possibly helping and is making a difference is that we can be a way that the New York uh, Police Department, that uh, the Bronx District Attorney, that various elected officials that are trying to improve the quality of life uh, here in the borough can get wor the message out to the community about initiatives like this or about a street cleanup or about uh, uh, any number of other things that people who are civically engaged and care and want to get uh, civically engaged can learn about. This is one way, this vehicle that connects elected leaders also. We connect elected leaders to their constituents through information, through programs, the services offered by organizations in this borough. That's another aspect of what we do. So I encourage you to see this beautiful borough. It is, it's got a New York Botanical Gardens, it's got the world famous Bronx Zoo, the Bronx Museum of the Arts, authentic uh, uh, Little Italy in the Bronx uh, with Arthur Avenue, um, and you'll find you know, beautiful cultural treasures from every part of the world here in the Bronx, whether it be culinary, artistic, um, uh, literary. Uh, it, it's it's a, a vibrant, it's a vibrant place. And BronxNet, you know, through our independent producers, through our professional team, uh, through the, the voices here, are a part of telling that story, not only locally, but globally. So we seek partnerships with, with, um, entities with individuals in other parts of the world as well. So whether it be uh, Dominican Republic, uh, um, whether it be other parts of the Caribbean, you know, Mexico, Puerto Rico, uh, Albanian programming, uh, whether it be um, Africa, uh, other parts of Europe, and, uh, and uh, you know, Jamaica, um, Latin America, you'll find programs that reflect the diversity of the Bronx on BronxNet. These are producers from these communities, growing communities, including uh, like the Gryphona community, they speak English, Spanish, and Gryphona. Uh, and they do programs about, you know, there's about five Gryphona programs on BronxNet. 
and they'll do programs in Spanish and English, but also in Garifuna, and they get calls not only from the Bronx, but they get calls from Honduras, because we're streaming on the internet. We're not only on cable casting on television, we're streaming on the internet, and that internet stream is being picked up by a TV station in Honduras. And people in Honduras are calling in and talking about local issues and global issues. Do you think it would be fruitful or helpful to see a bit of, of uh, what we do? BronxNet has equipped thousands of men, women, and young people to depict the borough in ways that reflect the experience, voice, and vision of the people who actually live here. Just as they are passionate about the issues, the producers of BronxNet use the cameras to capture the vital energy, the everyday activities that are the pulse of the Bronx. The forums, parades, festivals, and studio programs shared on BronxNet that say we are proud. Estamos orgullosos, yimidem, unyam krenar, nahenu mustafaren, pantatiwa. We are proud of who we are. They capture the flavorful and unique treats, treasures, and triumphs that reflect the colorful heritage and make the Bronx the Bronx. They focus on the sports and other healthful activities that keep us fit to fight the good fight another day tomorrow. While the producers of BronxNet document all the Bronx has to offer, they even document the documentarians across disciplines. The people of the Bronx who leave tablets for tomorrow as they share their thoughts, feelings, experiences, and knowledge through the visual arts, literature, film, science, and music. The producers of BronxNet are themselves leaving a wealth of information that people from future generations can enjoy when they find and open the treasure chest and access the digital tablets, media time capsules of your channels, BronxNet. Eventually, what we decided to do uh, was reframe what we, we our, 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 um, our programming and the way we approach programming and news. So, because News 12 was providing this news service uh, through their commercial efforts, we decided to uh, focus on uh, talk programming, interactive programming, magazine shows, uh, as well as arts and culture. So in our magazine shows, uh, not only will we bring people, newsmakers, into the studio to interview them about an issue, but we'll send our cameras out to help, you know, to tell the story. Um, and a show like Open is produced here uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, three days a week. Uh, live, one-hour show, and it has uh, news content, but it's not strictly a news show. We call it a magazine show. We provide more analysis than news. <laughs> and Marcelo, I think, is... Marcelo, if you could find something that... Uh, I'm Rina Valentin, and join us for the ride as we learn some things about our Boricua Cultura. Congressman, would you share with everyone what today has been like for you? To have your borough tell you that they want you to be the Grand Marshal of the Parade, that's a great honor. How was it marching along the Grand Concourse? Oh, it was amazing. The weather was great. The crowds were great. We have health programs that uh, really, I would say, provide vital information in a place that is considered to have the most devastating health statistics in the nation. Uh, the Bronx has a big problem with obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and asthma. And uh, statistics point to it uh, as being the least healthy county in the nation. So BronxNet has been a part of um, trying to raise awareness about healthy eating and diet uh, <coughs> with um, various uh, doctors, experts, as well as fitness advocates uh, like um, uh, Grandmaster Melly Mel, a pioneer of hip-hop 
from Grandmaster Flash. He's also a uh, he's also you know pretty diesel. He's pretty uh, pretty strong. He does a f he's he's launched a fitness show on BronxNet. So so now do you compete for uh, talent uh, with uh, News uh, Twelve? I'm glad you asked that question. As a matter of fact, no. uh, many no. of the so students we train um, go on to work to at News 12. So right now, Michael Leon, who started here as a high school student, is a director at News 12. Uh, Sheba Russell, who started her reporting here at BronxNet, went on to report for News 12, and now she's an anchor at NBC uh, Network. Um, <coughs> Sade Newton uh, was... Um, taking graphics uh, um, classes at Lehman College and uh, was college training at BronxNet uh, and developed television experience and here. And now he is a graphics professional at News 12. And I think he just moved on to CNN. Uh, uh, we have uh, various uh, personalities as well as production professionals that have uh, built experience here, picked up their first camera here, taken training here, and then um, go on to work at News 12 and other operations. Dean Memminger, who you, in, the, in the more recent version of that video you saw, he started as a reporter here, and because of that opportunity, he is now a anchor at, um, he's an anchor at New York One. Darlene Rodriguez, her first reporting uh, for television was here at BronxNet. Her experience built here led to her now being an anchor at NBC. Leslie Peggett, high school student, started training in media here at BronxNet. Now she's a director of post-production at CBS, which is another major commercial network. So, you know, we're a feeder in some ways for some of these networks and operations, uh, and we, uh, you know, I would say are contributing to giving opportunities to Bronxites where they would not have had this opportunity, uh, had they not had this place to train and build experience. So we're also a natural partner for colleges and universities, like this one, Lehman College, where we're located. It's a beautiful campus, part of the City University of New York. We train many of their students, and they go on to get careers in related fields and in communications and media, uh, as well as the high school students, because of the high school students good experience, great experience here at BronxNet, you can ask them about it, and chances are they'll tell you it's a great experience. And, and we also have, because of the nature of BronxNet, we have the, the, the capability of showing what we call Bronx Current, and basically uh, every month there's a Bora Board meeting. We cover the whole Bora Bora meeting and we put it on the air in their entirety, so people can see every single word they say. It is very important to for them to learn uh, uh, and to understand how a media organization in the United States operates in general and uh, what tools you're using today, how you reach out uh, to the communities, and uh, I think for them it's uh, valuable when they go back to, the, to Uzbekistan and hopefully they will be able to apply some of what they've learned here in this country.